Mohan. Thank you, Jose. So, yeah, I'm happy to have my fellow panelists here. So, um, on that note, uh, companies need to integrate sustainability strategies across multiple dimensions of their digital transformation roadmaps. And data sharing and tracking platforms can reduce environmental impacts before they're even magnified. I, I saw in one of uh, the slides of Jan about how important it is to look at verified uh, data with veracity. So digital transformation without sustainability will put pressure on companies to lose out customers if they are not actually thinking about sustainability in the long run. And uh, Microsoft Azure and AWS are pioneers in driving sustainable cloud solutions. Uh, the biggest change in businesses, business models have happened in the last uh, six to eight years, driven by companies like Uber, Airbnb, Netflix, et cetera. And Uber is changing the way the Gen Z is thinking about car ownership in the first place. So like Airbnb pre-pandemic, and now of course things have changed drastically after the pandemic, was challenging the biggest hotel chains in the world with no inventory of their own. And Netflix, of course, is, uh, is doing the Hollywood at your home uh, in, the, in their own studios. So a key common thread about all these companies are that they consider themselves as, as uh, technology companies first. And that's the reason they've been able to uh, transform their industry and be nimble uh, to change uh, according to the customer needs and open up new revenue streams. So digital transformation does the same thing to large enterprises by adapting today's AIML, deep tech, cloud, and more importantly, the mindset as an enterprise. Uh, they are challenging their own selves and looking at new revenue streams. So uh, of course, we have a distinguished uh, set of panelists who have together helped us uh, help multiple companies achieve this trans transformation journey sustainably. And without further ado, let's get started. So. Let me start with the uh, first question uh, to Jan, you know, so, you know, just to give a context and a perspective, as what is the difference between adopting new technology versus digital transformation? So, um, I think that the, the core question is how to endorse values. That's, that's the first step. And I'm very glad that the representative of the European Union was picking up on that. Um, I think if we only t think about tech solutions, it's tech solutions, but it's not value. So what we have to first think is, what is the value we want really to add? And if we understand what the value is, what the job to be done is, then we can access. And I think there's a lesson we can learn now from a lot of people getting very sort of terrified by the big ones you were mentioning, Airbnb, uh, Netflix and the ones. And um, I see a very critical m movement coming up of pushing that development away. So what really corporates have to think about is how to involve the citizen into the picture, the person, a real value, and how to endorse that into a business case. I'm, I'm not rejecting business cases. We are all living on business cases, of course. But it has to add real value. And if, if we do so, there's an option. We saw a lot of places where smart city developments failed. Why did that? Because we didn't enclose the people and the value of the people. So the first step is to, and as you proved, value proof is the first step. What is the real value we're looking at? And if we have that in focus, then we can build on, on that. That's good. Yeah, thank you. I think. Uh, value and embellishing that core value across the organization is, is of paramount importance, so I get that. So Now, uh, you know, what's the mindset change all through the hierarchy, perhaps from the pre-sales team to the admin, has everybody adapting digital transformation and sustainability? And I would like to hear from Pavan on this, how, how are they helping in this journey? Thanks, Mohan. Um, I guess there's no one straight answer to that question. <laughs> It, it depends on the situation, on the organization that you're dealing with, and the the mindsets. So let's take some something like that's happening in India, which is I think closer to closer to all of us. I think we embrace change a lot faster than most other societies, and this change actually helps us uh, implement some of the new technology solutions faster. And just like Jan mentioned. Outcome-based technology implementation is most critical. Technology for the sake of technology is not going to help us. I think it's all about what is the actual outcome that we desire out of it. 
why do we want to do this if we follow that approach i think we we start off with any organization and it comes out quite effective yeah so would you like to uh, add by an example about well many examples exist uh, don't want to name any i think there was an example of the motorcycle outside uh, in fact the the folks there's another company in bangalore called ather uh, which which makes electric scooters i think they're already commercial mm -hmm. well we i happen to know those uh, two gentlemen who started that company as students in iit madras and when they started talking about working on a concept like this and just like i think heman mentioned about the startup program we don't have a branded startup initiative we actually utilize this uh, i would say mentoring approach with our engineering knowledge work with them and we are happy to see where they have come so it was all about embracing change it's a completely integrated company right from the battery pack to the battery management system to the charging station also is made by them it's a complete integrated solution i think that's a, that's a good story to talk about yeah thanks for that um the next question is to ravi uh, can you help us to drill down how has deep tech ai ml helped in the journey of transformation and what are the real life examples that uh, that you have been able to implement uh, having it more sustainable hello yeah thank you yeah so you know obviously you know, when i when i presented on the 5g and and the smart cities the underlying uh, the underlying capability is about data that comes from the the smart solutions right and then how do you utilize that data you know ethically is is a key, is is an important aspect to transform the use cases or the solutions for the better uh, betterment or the sustainability and uh, so when you look at it some of the use cases is that I'll, i'll take an example of pollution which is a hot topic in india right now right there are multiple contributors to that problem you know industries you know you you ask different people different people say what what is the contribution contribution uh, who is contributing to that problem right now back in the day when we used to know what the weather is in a particular city you would say okay bangalore 22 degrees and this is the humidity and and stuff like that and you don't know exactly which location is that pointing to it's bangalore bangalore is so big now you have the technology where you can deploy pollution sensors on a street pole at a very reasonably dense manner meaning you could you could cover you know 5 square kilometer with with maybe 3 or 4 such uh, pollution sensors now you have that granularity in the data that uh, uh, that you are collecting to pinpoint the problem areas and the contributing factors so if you put a pollution sensor at a traffic junction you know four way six way traffic junction and you have two wheelers three wheelers buses trucks cars all are passing through that junction and now you put a pollution sensor at that location and then look at what is the contributing pollutants in the air and then analyze the fact that trucks with diesel have these characteristics of emission and two wheelers with with petrol have that characteristics of emission and looking at your con, you know contributing uh, and and looking at your parameters of your pollution parameter whether it is sox nox carbon dioxide monoxide all of these things then you are able to correlate better who is contributing to the spike in co2 or spike in uh, you know uh, sox or, or or whatever right so those are the directions how you know this sustainable use cases are going towards right we have worked with startups who literally have a pollution outdoor pollution sensor that is the size of this now you can you can deploy this in and then you can be more innovative in that is that you don't have to install it forever you you are now able to deploy it temporarily for 2 months 3 months 6 months collect the data analyze it look at the data coming in and then create some policy decisions right and then time of the day you know if if you look at the traffic pattern during the time of the day and look at the pollution parameters uh, or, or the con uh, con uh, you know constituents of the pollution data then you know okay at this time of the day because of the trucks moving you you are having this spike in in, in the pollution then you are you, you make a choice of policy to to address that so these there are some some examples like that and the other thing is around the energy smart lighting is a huge use case right and now every street light has the ability to be connected 
and controlled remotely, dimmed smartly based on the traffic, based on the movement, based on time of the day. So which gives the city operators and the urban operators ability and the data to utilize the street lights in the smartest manner, you know, by reducing the energy consumption, but also not compromising on the safety that the street lights deliver. So there are many areas like this where technology is enabling sustainable, uh, you know, uh, use cases, sustainability use cases in, in urban areas. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, next question uh, to the gentleman in the corner. So uh, how do you market your transformation to the world and, and what is the specific sustainability message that you can drive uh, to all the stakeholders at large? Thank you. So um, to understand the question, so you, the context here uh, would be in terms of marketing innovation and linking it with uh, sustainability, right? Okay. That, that's a wonderful question, Mohan. Thanks for asking. So from where we see things, I guess at the end of the day, it has to touch the common people. That's the baseline sort of a, uh, uh, you know, action level that we have to target. If it's not touching the common people, like a lot of cases that Jan brought up, where people were getting their addresses for the first time, right? Now think of the impact that that is bringing, right? Even as a story, even if I have to, as a marketer, take that story somewhere, it's already ready-made, it sells itself. What should I do? I just have to align it with the right channel and take it out there, right? So these are powerful stories. So many such stories are out there, but they are not coming out because these channels are not really aligned. So the first focus should be in terms of establishing these channels from where we can amplify these voices and amplify these stories as well. Then the marketing will follow automatically. But right now what is happening is such cases are only discussed in forums like these and they sort of die a natural death after that, which is very unfortunate, right? Even look at what we are doing, like, right? So every year, whenever Jose brings us here, <laughs> I'm saying Jose, <laughs> Jose, so Jose brings us here, we tell these stories out there, right? And then so everyone goes back and forgets all this. So we have to be sustainable, not just in terms of the technologies, in terms of our approach, in terms of our outlook, but also in terms of the way we market them and in terms of how we bring them in front of the stakeholders, right? At the end of the day, this is, we should be in here for the long term, right? Like, for instance, why are there, uh, you know, so much discussions about climate change from the other side, saying that it's not happening, right? There's a global warming happening, there's a global cooling happening. I mean, obviously, we are missing the, uh, you know, message somewhere in between. Obviously, we are not being powerful and impactful with what we want to say at some point, right? And as I said, the right channels are not aligned right now. A lot of these messages are not even propagating through social media, for instance. Though it's already such an established medium for uh, communication today, these things are not even sort of appearing on uh, the radar of individual, uh, you know, individual or even collective social media users at some point. So all I can say uh, in, in summary is that I think we have to align the channels and we have to bring these stories out there in public in a much more sustainable way. And uh, uh, the next question before we move on to the uh, audience for open questions is uh, uh, for the gentleman uh, here. How, how do you market your transformation to the world? And is there, uh, is there a co-relevance between your uh, digital transformation, sustainability? At each stage, uh, do you have uh, some measurable matrices? Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, because um, one is uh, it, it has to be in the DNA, right? So uh, it's not just for doing that, uh, the organization has to be doing it. So right from, uh, as I said, the tagline, right from the vision, right from the uh, place where the topmost management, the board, actually starts sending messages that uh, whatever products you build has to be of the highest quality. Whatever products you build has to be with the least emission, right? Uh, whatever products you build has to be, I mean, you have to be able to recycle it. You should be able to measure. So, so from that aspect, um, the AI or IoT is being packaged more into telling that, okay, just don't use the technology for what you have to use it, but ensure, for example, in power tools, ensure that the whole power tool segment is connected so that you know when it is running, when it, it has to be repaired. Uh, similarly with the home uh, consumer goods. 
right so connected consumer goods uh, or connected industrial appliances connected home appliances really help to ensure that um, we, we are able to track where it is going so these taglines or these concepts are also used in the marketing so when we market um, let's say it's it's a low energy consumption device five star rating device uh, and we ensure that there is no um, stone left unturned to ensure these things are taken care of even during the product development yeah so this also helps to bring that mindset of what you talked about earlier what pavan talked about earlier into the whole uh, um, let's say the employees associates at each level yeah when during the product development during ux design these are all considered and hence uh, right from marketing to when the product is released uh, these are already incorporated into the products yeah i have an open question for you now now that uh, you're talking on sustainability in the last while see what's happening like take for example we have plastic bottles right in front of all of us how do we deliver a, a message to all the stakeholders in in this transformation journey as to you know at all walks of life and and maybe perhaps some more opening comments on on uh, digital transformation and sustainability collectively to uh, to each of the stakeholders right it's not just one parameter that we are measuring Uh, like for example we've got lead certification we have so many things that are happening but in the real world we are not able to see that tangible results when when are when is it likely to be implemented 5 years 2 years so well um i think as soon as the big corporates and bosch and all the others are understanding it cisco um there's no business case without sustainable development and as soon as we get this leverage in our hand it will work we've got a very good setup for profit measuring and we've got a very good setup for kpis for whatever abti and whatever we've got all that but we haven't got yet a co2 minus kpi and as soon as we've got that in the papers and the stakeholder papers it will work the next step is to connect to the and i said before to the value to the people as soon as bosch can prove i'm improving your life next door i'm opening up a sidewalk so we can get to a walkable city and suddenly i can really walk right here in bangalore <laughs> wow this is it this will happen as soon as cisco opens up and says oh right we've got 5g here and there's a slice of 5g we open up for social entrepreneurs and you can use 5g for tracking down uh, the water supplies wow this is happening if we have open simulation and people can walk in and say listen i've got this question in my mind i always wondered if this could happen could we make a digital twin can i do that with you so what i really have to do is open up the places like cybersecurity wow yeah data veracity if we all rely on data can i as an ngo approach you and have a question and could you check that up with you so i i, I think this is one side is the profit second side is having a co2 kpi and the third side is opening up to the citizen yeah and that's very very uh, i hope somebody from the government also make note of this because it should be a balance sheet item right we have measuring the index of profitability uh, like we have certifications I, i think it should be a line item up there in the balance sheet so that will be great maybe now i'd like to open up the questions from the audience if you have uh, any questions please state your name and who the question is addressed to in the panel Yeah hello everybody uh thank you so much it was an interesting talk and lot of insights have been there when i was thinking about uh, you know how to make out the story is loud basically and how to make uh, whatever the companies are doing uh so i just have uh, two questions like you know i have been reading about esg criteria that is environmental social and governance criteria and the reports which has been published by companies so how well it is going to be integrated if we want to include all the stakeholders so that they become socially environmentally conscious and responsible and if esg criteria could one of the mechanism 
to measure sustainability. So I would like to have uh, your views on this. Thank you. Would you like to address it specifically to somebody or anybody? No, I think all of you are <laughs> doing uh, very good in your companies and a lot of things are going in all the terms. So uh, any one of you can just share your views on this. Thank you. Thank, thanks for the question. Uh, so, I mean, I obviously come from, from a technology uh, company and then we make hardware products that depend, you know, that, that consume power as, as one of the examples. But at the same time, we also make technologies that reduce travel for for various purposes with, with our video conferencing technologies and collabor remote collaboration technologies and, and stuff like that, right? So from a sustainability perspective, it's a huge topic and, and not because you know we just had you know COP26 and, and, and stuff like that, but within Cisco it's been a huge topic ever since we we invented the the video conferencing back in mid 2000s, right? One of the goals we had was to reduce business travel by a certain percentage, which obviously uh, contributes to uh, you know sustainability in, in a big way. So having said that, now what also we have started to see is is that many of the governments when they start to ask for tenders and RFPs for certain projects, they are almost mandating the technology vendors and other partners within that project to, to document and, and, and respond with their sustainability contributions to the project, as well as sustainable development practices within their organization. So we have started to see that uh, uh, very, very uh, strongly, uh, especially in some of the uh, you know, projects that we see in, in, in Europe, etc. So I think one is the internal culture within, within the organization. Uh, you know, most of the tech companies have, have an inbuilt culture to, to contribute to the sustainable development and sustainable future. But the government's now mandating to, to you know, respond back with the, the organization's sustainability practices is, is, is also putting the pressure back on the enterprises to, to make sure that they, they address it and walk the talk. Right. So, that's my yeah, anybody else wants to make? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, one thing that we are doing is um, uh, at Bosch, uh, we are also looking at uh, uh, being responsible by looking at the starting stage. Right. So, uh, when? How do you extract raw material? To how do you really uh, look at bringing in efficiency there? to the way we manufacture, how can we cut down on, let's say, the emissions in the manufacturing industries, which are the things which can be converted into an emission-less thing. So thereby uh, really looking at the carbon footprints. The third is on, uh, let's say, uh, when we bring out the products, as I already talked about, how can you ensure that the products actually help to do this. So uh, looking at the relevant certifications, ensuring that it is not just the person who is doing it, but also the certifications act as checkpoints, right? So if someone, some product manager says, no, I don't want to do it, it's not possible. So the product release is done by a QA, uh, the quality management, and it is required that these are certified, which also ensures it is not individual dependent, but more on process uh, dependent. And the third is after you release, how do people take care of it? So that is where the recycling, refurbishing, and blockchain really adds a value there. So, so across the chain, we are looking at how to bring in to increase the efficiencies, to optimize it, and also to contribute to the social society. So, um, so that's a wonderful question. So there's another dimension to this, um, uh, which we often miss out, which basically is now, if you extend sustainability into the rural areas and uh, in, into the uh, lesser developed economies, right? For them, sustainability is about surviving from day to day, right? Now, how do co corporates connect with that reality, right? Do, do we, are we evolved enough to even understand what is going on in these parts, right? Uh, second part is uh, look around you, right? Look at the uh, condition of these, um, you know, uh, animals that are around us, right? Uh, yesterday there was something trending about increasing the fines for uh, uh, you know uh, assaulting animals and things like that now how connected are corporates with that reality now und i understand a lot of us are doing some fantastic job in terms of our esg goals uh, you know csr mandates and everything else but i still feel again this is my i i feel this personally that there is a strong disconnect that exists in terms of covering the last mile 
in terms of corporates connecting with certain realities out there. Now, obviously, you cannot expect corporates to do everything for all of us, right? But yes, we are all trying our best to really do things. But there are certain goals which really have to be taken up now and are due for attention from all of us here, like nutrition, right? Uh, healthcare and sanitation, for instance. Uh, you know, maternal health care, right? How can we allow children to die in, in our rural areas? I mean, is, is that something that, that can uh, be, you know, condoned at any levels, right? We, we cannot even think of uh, uh, so many of these goals that are still waiting to be addressed. But a start has to be made somewhere, be it in this room or anywhere else for that matter. But I do feel corporates really need to step up our game in terms of connecting with these realities. Because, you know, no one else can tell us all these things. It's something that we need to develop from within and build on it. Because we address so many challenges between ourselves. Digital transformation, even about five to six years back, was a mirage. Right? No one even knew what really it meant. Everyone used to talk about it. I, have, I used to sit through so many presentations. But today it's a reality around us. With work from home, home and everything else, we have understood what digital transformation is all about. Internet of things. So again, six years back, People were worrying about what it would do for us. Today, it's integrated with our lives, you know, thanks to the pandemic, in, in a certain manner of speaking. So I feel that, you know, if we were to just take a couple of more steps, I'm sure we'll be able to address a lot of these challenges in a much more soulful manner, so to say. Thank you for that. I think uh, we've kind of yeah. run out of time. I have, uh, before I come to that question, uh, just hold on to it. Uh, uh, last question to the fellow panelists, just to think through. Half the world is still not accessing the internet, as what Jan mentioned. Uh, what's going to happen? The uh, the whole world is going to explode with so much of data, which means so much of compute resources, so much of cooling that is needed, and uh, a every amount of petabyte of data that it is going to generate. Are we going to be sustainable? And uh, Jan, what are your comments on uh, on the future next five years from today? How is it going to be visualized? Yes, you're raising a very important question. And we had that today in the morning with Mr. Reddy. He was stating that that the additional data power would surely put pressure on the system. So we have to really rethink what kind of data we are playing around with. Is it for pure entertainment or is it for a purpose? And I would really claim we should check out for the purpose. So um, let's bring our smartest brains together and come up with solutions to get the greenest IT you can ever think of. And again, if we look at Microsoft, what they're doing, and Amazon is following it, at, uh, and uh, Google is doing it as well, we all should do it. Rethink our data center thinking. Bringing that to, to the cloud, bringing that sustainable, getting that running on green energy. And if it's not run on green energy, just don't do it. So in other words, you're saying that before you hit the forward message on your WhatsApp with a 20 MB video file, think twice, right? That's the last mile message that we're going to drive. <laughs> okay, so I, I think this is the last Yeah, part. so thank you for uh, entertaining my question. My name is Hari from the Sustainability Mafia, aka Sustainability Engine Foundation, a Section 8 nonprofit and community of about 70 problem solvers and entrepreneurs in sustainability and climate tech working from India. So <clears throat> my question is, uh, you know, working as somebody in sustainability, climate action for several years now across for-profit and non-profit, one of the things I've noticed is that uh, <laughs> there's very miserly funding for non-profit, even though some of those projects are extremely important. For example, to go net zero or to, uh, you know, install sensors of air pollution and to use these to create better outcomes for cities uh, at the city level, whether whichever frameworks you're using, you sometimes need to be doing things for which there are no business models and nobody is going to scale through that. For example, uh, we still don't have an understanding how, of how vulnerability works in our cities and how to mitigate this climate vulnerability, for example. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that, um, you know, from the captains of industry and so on and so forth, how do we uh, ensure that we have the platforms and the projects in place so that uh, sustainability really happens. Is there going to be some cross subsidization which happens? Uh, I'll give you a specific example. I mean, one could ask the question, why don't we already have our air pollution monitoring network and which is creating better outcomes, right? What's so hard about a couple of crores of rupees to deploy all those sensors? Uh, 
on the other hand where is it coming from i mean if it's coming from philanthropic aid which is very carbon intensive in its base then perhaps there are some conflicts of interest which need to be resolved in our society right just putting this question out uh, i would ask the gentleman who has worked on air pollution and anybody else who has a forward vision for how to build these platforms thank you so if we get your question correctly you, you're talking about sustainability for not not for profits and no i'm just saying that in order to become sustainable as a city or even as a locale some things need to be done for which there are no business models where will the financing for these come from okay looks like ravi has some answers right. <laughs> it's a tough question honestly right i mean and, and that's probably why it is a question because it's not been solved uh, i'll give you a, a, a bit of a um, long winded answer right when we looked at smart cities as a as a business obviously and and then also um, an area of investment the the roi for the cities the customers who want to de deploy this solution is is the top of the mind right so when we looked at the use cases i presented uh, uh, there are use cases that are revenue generating for the cities or money saving for the cities and then there are some use cases that are social use cases it is an expenditure to the city but they are neither generating revenue nor saving money for the city so environmental monitoring is one one of that then urban safety is another i mean you are not generating revenue by putting surveillance cameras you are essentially committing uh, you you are reducing the crime with that right so there is no direct sort of an roi associated with these cases there is an indirect meaning that you are reducing pollution you are reducing crime means that the city becomes much more appealing for businesses and and citizens to move in and 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 it thrives right obviously you need to make sure the sustainability works now how do you fund these mm, 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 these use cases one is obviously you know the csr is is a is a big topic for a lot of companies and they you know potentially it's a vehicle to fund some of these you know through pppps right is one the second one is that you look at the money saving or money generating use cases and can you move that money to the ones that need money but not necessarily generating revenue for you like for example if you implement smart street lighting across the city that can save anywhere from 40 to 80% of your energy bill for the city that that it pays to to the utilities now can you take that money savings and put it into use cases to implement like pollution monitoring urban safety etc so these are some of the sort of uh, so, so wh where i'm coming from is are there some factors beyond you know just the money because for air pollution for example you can do the source apportionments you can have uh, disaggregated source apportionment so on and so forth but once the finger is pointed right what's the action item and why are we as a society and as a city like wasting so much time to get to that action item is my question uh, which i hope is relevant sorry i didn't get the full question yeah ah hari don't worry hari hari hi yeah, yeah. you please take it outside because sure, sure, we are strict sure, sure. on time people sure, sure. are online sure, sure. last comment from yan and then we close hari is here so we can meet down during lunch you solve okay okay so uh, there's an answer from oxford and i all encourage you i encourage you all to read the book from uh, Ray Carth Ray no K Rathworth uh it's about donut economics donut economics is a perfect example where you go beyond money and profit and actually the donut economics were introduced by the Amsterdam city to rule their business development and so it it's it would take too long to explain the model but check it out K Rathworth uh donut economics and it's in place in amsterdam so there's an example to go beyond money uh, thank you very much gentlemen that was i i had a lot of learning today uh i let uh, okay uh, thank you uh, panelists i think that was excellent shall we give a big round of applause to all the panel members uh may I request you all to stand for a group photo uh mr saurosh could you also join us for because this is a digital panel <laughs> very much your area uh, i think we'll come forward in front of the table so please
Thank you so much to uh, panelists and thank you all who are here and thank you those who are joining us online. Another round of applause to all the panelists.